Hey, it's Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons, and I've been teaching jazz, piano, improvisation, and composition for 25 years or so. And in those years, I've been teaching and also using a tactic I call combination practice, which I think you'll find really useful. So what is combination practice, you may ask? It's pretty simple. You're just combining various concepts and ideas into one thing. So rather than just working on voicings, and then rather than just working on scales or rhythms, you say, well, what could I do with these things that I'm working on? No matter how simple or complex, how could I combine them together into one thing? So what's beneficial about it? Well, when you combine various ideas together, first of all, it completely expands your capacity to digest more information. That's the first thing. Second thing, it helps you become more fluent at connection because you're putting multiple things together at once. So rather than just like connecting a scale to another scale, now you have to combine a scale while playing a voicing and connect them both. So it's, it definitely helps with fluence. Fluence? Fluency. Because as I've said, learning how to connect equals fluency. It's also much more aligned with just playing the music because you're rarely just doing one thing especially pianists, guitar players, but even horn players. But like a piano player, I'm thinking lines, voicings, putting them together, you know, kind of this thing. But even a horn player or anybody playing a single note instrument, you're still thinking of multiple things all at once. And this just uh, keeps opening up your capacity to think in more ways and be more multidimensional. So if you're gonna be multidimensional as a player, you might as well be multidimensional when you practice. This can be as simple or complicated as your level or as you feel necessary. Um, I'm gonna try to just show some different ways that we can do this. To demonstrate, I'll lay out a few scenarios where you could do this. And they don't have to be real like, you know, pre-planned. This could be, it's more about awareness when you're working on something and you can start to see, okay, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Let's try to find a way to put it together. Always be trying to create exercises for yourself. They're so beneficial. And exercises don't just mean like learning licks. It could just be an exercise you came up with in that moment and then you forget about it. That's fine. But always try to find ways that you can combine these together. So scenario one, let's say I'm working on the major bebop scales and I'm just doing it from the root descending. I'm trying to get these under my fingers. I just checked out like a Barry Harris video and he's showing these. He didn't call it the bebop scale by the way, he called it the six diminished scale, but it's okay to call it the bebop scale. So that's the, that's the first thing let's say I'm working on, okay? Okay, let's say I'm also I'm trying to get these three, five, six, nine, these six, nine voicings together. So I'm working on those through the circle, right? Okay, great. That's awesome, because you gotta do this, you gotta start somewhere. So let's say, well, what if I start combining the scale in my right hand and the voicing in the left hand? One, two, three, four. 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 So right there, I'm I'm combining two things together. Okay, well, how about um, now instead of just playing the root, maybe I want to get my left hand a little more active. So maybe I could do a root and then the voicing, maybe on an offbeat. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. I just did a thing now where I went. So maybe I can add that little fifth pickup. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. That's one thing, okay? Right there, I just took all of these things and made them into one thing. Let's say I'm going. No. Okay, so I just added another thing. 
So I did the bebop scale, a major seventh arpeggio, down to the six. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. Ha <laughs> ha. So rather than just doing these little things in their own little place, now I've created this this thing that is what it's five five different things or so that I'm working on. So I think it's obvious how beneficial this is. So that's that's one example. Scenario two. Let's say you're trying to work on voicings. Um, I'm going to take the song form of Blues for Alice, which is kind of a they call it the bird blues. So let's say I'm trying to work on my kind of four note rootless voicings over the changes of blues for Alice. Okay, so that, that's one thing. Now, let's say I'm also trying to work on um, syncopation with the voicings. Maybe I want I want to work on my off beats. So now instead of just playing the voicings, maybe I'll play a little bass note in my left hand as whole notes or harmonic rhythm of the changes and I'll, I'll just do off beats. I'm exaggerating a lot, but I'm trying to really <laughs> demonstrate. Okay, that's one thing. Now, maybe I want to work on walking bass. So instead of just working on the walking bass, let's add some parameters. I can only play roots and fifths. And I can only approach uh, the next chord by a half step above or below. So root fifth when you're on the chord, but then the, the note to approach it has to be a half step. So let's say I'm going. Now let's say the, the combination practice now is let's combine the voicings the syncopation and put it together. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, last scenario. Let's say I'm trying to get familiar with the tune Just Friends. Um, and I'm trying to get these uh, shell voicings together to, to outline the harmony. Uh, you know, key of G, first chord is C major. Just friend. Do -do -do -do. So let's say I kind of got the shell voicings together, but remember, when you have something together, there's always another kind of step you could you could do. Okay, so let's say you're trying to get your left hand a little more solid, and it's you're, it's kind of boring. One thing I want to tell you about the left hand as a pianist, you don't have to do a lot. Um, so maybe in relation to what we were doing with the last uh, scenarios, we want to work on syncopation and offbeat. So Maybe the first thing you're going to work on, instead of just doing it in the two hands, you're just going to do it in your left hand, and you're going to break up the shells, and you're going to use syncopation uh, as the next thing to implement. 
One, two, uh, two, three, four. Now to add to that, maybe I decide I want to work on um, just playing the third and the seventh of every chord in the right hand. You know, maybe... Uh Any inversion. Now I'm going to combine that with the syncopated left hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, I, I'm doing that really exaggerated just so you can see me putting some stuff together. But if you did that rather than just... This is where we started. We went from that to breaking up the shells, syncopation, adding a right hand in there, very specific rules. That's, that's one thing I would want to say. When you do this, make the rules very specific into what you're doing and try not to break them. A point that I think is important to know is when you're working on creative music, jazz is a creative art form. That doesn't mean that it's all just kind of out of the blue. I think the thing is, is you also have to be creative of, in how you practice. And by setting specific parameters, it allows you to have a framework to be creative inside of, and it gives you something concrete to work with. That's kind of what this is. I, I hope it is helpful. I hope it makes sense. And I'd love to hear some stuff that you might implement. If maybe put them in the comments and tell me uh, what worked for you or maybe some things that you came up with and share them. That would be awesome. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you have a great day and, and you know, just, just keep going and happy practicing.